Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through yet another week, and I hope you had a good one this week. This week, we uh, we had a good week. Very busy. A lot of stuff going on. I'm very uh, pleasantly surprised, that, uh, but not shocked, that you all like the Vice restoration. Uh, for some reason, Vices, everybody can get on board a vice restoration regardless of whether it's a good vice bad vice for some reason you all like it and and, and i appreciate the fact that you do and uh, we we have a few more to do coming up in the in the future um first off today i wanted to talk about uh, this week was a good week for the poor man's flea market which is when i go walking at night on garbage collecting night um in the earlier in the week i was walking and i found this box of trophies and in this box of trophies were medals and everything uh i used to take the trophies when i was a scout leader and i used to you know modify them for uh, pinewood derby or whatever other uh events that we had so uh, whenever i used to see trophies they'd pick them up and and the kids would get a trophy it didn't cost me anything but when you see a box like that it makes me wonder i said somebody worked very hard for those and they're in the trash also it was a good week for bicycles, I found some uh, really nice bicycles. I mean, of course, I don't take any, but nice bicycles that look like they were ready to ride. Remember when we were kids, somebody threw a bike out, they had flats, was missing a tire, the rim was bunt, bent, the handlebars were rusted. Today, when they throw out bicycles, the things look like they can go right back into the showroom where they bought them. It's amazing to me. So that was good. And then last night, check this out. Last night, I was walking... And uh, about, it wasn't garbage pickup night. So I was just out for my regular walk and I didn't expect to see anything. But then I was walking up this block that I don't usually walk up and I smelt wood. And I was like, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, right? My hearing's going, my eyes are going, but man, my, my smell is still good. I smelt wood. You know what that old wood smells like. You ever go into somebody's attic and you could smell the wood? That's just what I smelt like. I smelt old wood. And, I went, and sure enough, there it was, thrown out. Look at this. Somebody threw out a couple bookcases and they threw out some other, you know, odds and end furniture. Again, it wasn't pickup day, so it was out there. But look at this cedar blanket chest. Oh, look at that. I looked at this. This is an antique. You could tell because of the old-fashioned hardware that's on it. That's over 100 years old. Now, for those of you who don't know, I've done a video. My grandmother had a um, a uh, an old cedar uh, chest that was a, a short one. It, would, it was made, it had wheels on it. It was made to roll under the bed. And I restored it, gave it to my sister. I made a video on it. It's a 30-second video. I'll have the link in the description and uh, it came out beautiful. It was worse off than this one. So a beautiful cedar chest. Would you have taken that? Uh, you know, I know we, we talked about regrets and things like that. But um, and other things, you know, we got a bunch of things to talk about. It's going to be a mosh today. So let's get started. What do you say? OK, first up, do you remember we did this vice last week? And uh, you remember uh, I was trying to remove this bar from here and I drilled out the one, but there was three circles that were on here. I didn't see the second one, but uh, this wasn't a pin, but there was a pin. Stephen Witt, good friend of the show, picked out, he says, you know something? He says, if you look closely between, the, this says number L4, between the O and the L, he says, I think I see a pin there. Sure enough, I enhanced the photo. That's what's beautiful. I mean, my eyes, like I said, are shot. I can't see, but I can't see it in person. But you see on the photo, there's that little pin between the L, the uh, NO and the L4. Them. That's the where the second pin is in case you guys want to drill one out and remove that bar and replace that bar. That's where it is. So thanks very much for that, Stephen. Okay, next up. You know, I'm just sitting here wondering... Would you guys, would anybody out there have taken that cedar chest? This is the second cedar piece of furniture I've seen, but this one was an antique. Would you have taken that? Okay, um, next up. You know I stopped buying tools. <laughs> but the problem is that every once in a while, I don't know, you go on eBay and you're looking for one thing and something else pops up. And I bought these. I just wanted to show you how this guy pack this and this is why i feel a kinship to this gentleman whoever this was that i bought it from first of all it came in a flat rate you know an envelope like this right inside 
he had it in a secondary envelope. This is that uh, Tyvek, very heavy duty. This is rip proof, you know, whatever. Okay, so he put it in there. Open that up. Check this out. You ready? He put it, sandwiched it between two pieces of cardboard, and he, <laughs> bailing, using bailing wire, he, uh, he wired each piece onto the cardboard, so... And wrapped it with bubble wrap. And when you see these tools, you'll see that they're nothing like, you know, mint condition tools. They're, they're, they need restoration. But the fact that he went through all this problem, you know, all this trouble to do it. It was a man that, you know, I have a high respect for. And when he put the bailing wire through here, he taped it so it wouldn't pierce and, you you know, you wouldn't get cut with. So hats off to people that go the extra mile when they're shipping something. Let me show you what I got. And this is the three wrenches that I uh, purchased. I paid $13. Actually, the auction I won for $5 plus $8 shipping, $13 total. What you have here is three beautiful examples of uh, early manufacturing. And the first one, I've done one of these on the channel before. This is a Never Slip, Never Slip Horseshoe Company, founded in uh, 18, the late 1800s and, um, in Boston. And what they did was they made horseshoe corks, horseshoes and horseshoe corks. And a cork is like a stud and a stud would screw into the shoe of the, uh, of the animal actually in, in between the horseshoe and, uh, and they would create traction like a stud would, you know, like studded snow ties we used to have. And, um, and this was the tool to insert the corks and, uh, very interesting. I did one of these thinking it was an alligator wrench, but uh, found out later on that it was made for these specific corks. This one here is a nice wrench. Somebody tried a uh, initial grind, you know, like a cleanup on it. We're going to take it to the next step on here. Then I got this one here, this uh, Cusack Hardware Company uh, wrench. What's so interesting about this one, I believe this looks like the, uh, the opening for a fire hydrant. And uh, if that is, I don't know. Could it be a fire hydrant wrench? It was out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This here is another type of opening. I don't know what's for, whether it's a hand. And the other thing that's interesting is this bend to it. I don't know if that bend was meant to be there. Uh, it'd be very easy to straighten out with the date. But I believe that this bend was put there. This uh, bend was so that you it would raise up the top of the wrench when you were doing a uh, fire hydrant, I believe. What do you think? And then lastly, uh, this beautiful, look at this. Isn't that a nice chisel? It's like a mason chisel, and it's made by Mayhew. And you can see here, it's a half inch, model 830, in beautiful condition. You know, the tip, everything just needs to be cleaned up. But isn't that a sweet, I love all kinds of chisels, and, you know, especially unusual and odd-shaped ones. So that's a nice. So what do you think of these? So what do you say we do a quick cleanup? and uh, and get these back into shape. Now, over the years, we've kind of become addicted to power tools. I'm guilty of it. You know, we all like to grab the... But sometimes you, you don't have that option, you know, especially with these unusual shapes and stuff. So, you know, a, a hand wire brush, and especially putting a vise, will get rid of... Most of the, and then clean it up with the file, any slag, any, you know, so that it, uh, you do that first because now when you go over it with the flap sander, it, uh, you don't have to worry about messing up later. Uh, as for this Mayhew, uh, this is just beautiful. I don't think this was ever used, so I want to keep this as original as possible. So I just, that's the wire brush. We'll get out the staining with the fiber wheel, and that's all we're going to do with this and maybe the back. Look at that. It's got that little cap on there. It looks like it's pressed on afterwards, you know. I love that little detail, right? And uh, and then, of course, you got to get in the letters good with the wire brush because you can't do that once you're, you know, once you're in into the wrench. So let's get started with the flap sander.
Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what these three tools look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Boy, this was very, very rewarding today. Although this took me all of three hours to do this. What you see here, that's, that's a lot of work for tools like this. You don't usually see tools like this restored. <laughs> Blacksmith tools or, you know, you just don't. But we do on this channel. So let's take a look at what we have here. The beautiful never slip wrench done just absolutely beautiful you know the teeth are really nice on here didn't have to do anything on the inside um just lovely isn't it this is the way i always imagine having a wrench that's so worn from use that it took on a shine you know this one here this uh, fire hydrant wrench now it says it's a philadelphia fire hydrant i wonder if they're different in new york but i, I know new york has this but i've never seen the triangle type so let me know in the comments if you know about that i know we have a lot of firefighters out there and the reason i did it in the scout crafter red in here and baked it in so it settles down looks like almost like a crinkle finish in there isn't that lovely something you would see hanging on a fire uh fire house wall or something like that and that just came out great didn't it did the all the sides i mean it's just a just fantastic this thing now absolutely beautiful okay so and the last up we did the chisel and uh, we didn't do nothing really to just cleaned it up look at it you know i don't think this was ever used did a nice job on here and look at the filled in with a little yellow a little big vic fill in there with the yellow and that looks nice don't it? i i wanted that yellow and that's actually a cadet cub yellow and then of course we did the uh the back here i always like to i waxed it a little bit but there we did look at that back look it's just a lovely chisel i mean all three of these tools this was a good score for 13 dollars I'll, I'll tell you you know and especially with the i know you guys have been complaining uh, complaining about the prices of tools they did they skyrocketed they a lot of things that we look at have doubled thanks joe Okay, that was a uh, fun project, huh? We had uh, two and a half restorations there. Really enjoyed this one. Um, I want a quick story to tell you. You know, the other day when I was taking that walk on my poor man's flea market, and I did come across that cedar chest that I know some of you have been thinking about. Um, what happened was it was one o'clock in the morning. I called my girlfriend. I, I didn't call, I sent her an email. I, I don't want to wake her up at that time, but I sent her an email. I said, if you should wake up, I'm on my walk. Give me a ring just so happened she had gotten up to go to the bathroom when she came back she saw i left a, a, a email she uh answered it and um she called me you know she said uh, what's up i said i found this uh chat and i showed it to her she said oh you gotta take that she says you gotta take that i was like I, i'm already three blocks away i just thought she says no yeah she said i'll restore it she says i'll even i said really so she, so she's gonna restore it now she's done a couple pieces of furniture really well she's very good at so I said, okay, good. So she's going to uh, restore it. So I guess no regrets on this one, right? And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here it is. That's right. No regrets this time. You can see that tape. They put that on there just to keep the lid from flipping open. And I think they might have put some kind of antiquing solution on here to try and make it look, I don't know what, but that, that's all varnish. That's cracked varnish. That'll come right off. My other one was much worse condition than this one. You can see here, you see the top, the grain. It is absolutely beautiful. But like I said, this will strip right off. It's got all, nothing's missing. The feet are here. Let me show you the inside. There we go. Open it up. Now, first of all, look at that antique hardware. The bronze hinges. You see where the steel there, bronze covered steel. And here it is. You smell that? Listen, smell. Oh, God, that aromatic cedar. Just absolutely beautiful. It's got the original old-timey lock. You see that lock? And those two pins fit in there. I'll have to just get a key for it. Straighten that thing out. That's the only damage is right here next to that lock. But uh, we could fix that. That's it. That's the only damage on it. What do you think? Pretty, pretty interesting now. Like I said, I think they tried to refinish it with something that didn't mix with varnish. You could see some of the remnants that poured through here. But thank goodness they didn't cover the inside. You always leave the inside bare because that's what leaves the aromatic cedar odor that keeps the insects away. So there we go. No regrets. 
I'm sure we all can sleep good tonight, right? Okay, so in closing, that was a uh, one heck of an episode. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you again on Monday. Take care now. Bye-bye. By the way, one way you could tell old time furniture, listen to the knock. That's solid, solid old growth cedar.